All right, so I've got quite an introduction for you with a vast experience in the automobile industry in both the domestic and international market. Welcoming you, Mr. Shashank Srimastha, the Executive Director, Sales and Marketing at Maruti Suzuki. Thank you. We are limited. That's quite a heavy duty profile. Thank you so much. And uh, festive season's coming up in the next few months. What do you, what do you predict? What's your projections, sir? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, month on month, it has been getting better. Uh, we had the hard lockdown starting uh, March, March. Uh, uh, last week. Uh, yeah, there was no sales in uh, April because it was closed. But since April, after the uh, uh, since uh, May first week, when uh, the government allowed uh, retails uh, uh, to start from the showrooms, we have seen good traction, and I think month on month we have seen a good increase in the volumes as well. So I, we we are very optimistic about uh, the festive season. But uh, of course, there is an element of caution also. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, because of the con uh, the uh, prevailing pandemic uh, uh, sentiment. So, I would say if you were looking for one word to describe it, it's uh, cautiously optimistic. We've been hearing about your mission, Million Green by Maruti Suzuki. I, in fact, had the yeah. opportunity to drive one of your cars. We come to that a little later, the CNG model. But if you can tell us about okay. your mission, Million Green. Yeah, so Mission uh, Green Million is actually uh, something which uh, Marty Suzuki has thought of for our contribution to the environment. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, as we go along, there is a lot of talk in the industry about electric vehicles, yes. uh, about vehicles, uh, you know, with very low emission or no emission at all. But that's uh, a few years away, I think, before they become mainstream. In fact, current projection is that by 2030, we'll have just about 7% of uh, the total uh, sale uh, to the electric vehicles. But mm -hmm. if you look at projections of the uh, auto industry itself, uh, CAGR of about 6-7% from 2020 to 2030, India will be producing 70 million cars, out of which 7%, uh, uh, which is let's say about 5 million will be electric. And the rest probably will be um, all ICE engine, the internal combustion engine. Now, what Maruti Suzuki feels is, that if you have uh, 65 million cars being produced in 2030, which uh, you need to do something about the emission for, from these cars. Yeah. After all, these are uh, going to impact the environment quite a lot. And uh, uh, rather than looking at pure electric, because uh, as I said, uh, electric technology not yet developed enough for, uh, for, a, uh, for, uh, for, for um, consumers to get it and adopt it at a low cost of acquisition. So what we have said that is probably the path to that electric vehicles would be through a hybrid technology, mm. which is part electric, part uh, ICE engine, and also a mixed fuel usage, which mm. means you have to use more cleaner, cleaner fuels. Uh, uh, case in point, of course, is the CNG. And the mm. government is also supporting us in a big way. Uh, they are trying to promote the use of CNG as the uh, alternative fuel for powering motor vehicles. And Maruti Suzuki has introduced almost eight models now, uh, which are uh, uh, powered by CNG. We've got some very good results. We do hope that uh, in this mission, through our CNG vehicles, through more fuel efficient vehicles, through hybrid technology, we will achieve the one million say, next 1 million sale, green vehicle sales in a very short span of time. That is our mission, Green Million. That's sounding optimistic, not cautiously optimistic. You sound positively optimistic, uh -huh. sir. But uh, I wanted yeah, to ask yeah. you, this is a question with CNG a lot of people have, that in a city like Delhi, where CNG is used more widely, it's in the public transportation sector. How do you look at consumers as individual users moving to CNG? Public transportation versus yeah. personal use, how do you look at that with CNG? You'll be surprised uh, uh, that uh, while in Delhi also, the starting of CNG happened with the public transport. Hmm. There is a widespread adop adoption even amongst the individual consumers for uh, CNG. Uh, for example, and even in other centers where there are enough CNG stations, I think what is uh, uh, preventing the growth of CNG is uh, in the consumer segment is not uh, uh, really, as you said, the cost of, uh, of, of vehicle, uh, running cost of the vehicle, which, uh, which is very low, as you just mentioned. But also, uh, uh, it is the availability of the uh, of the outlets for CNG, mm. uh, filling the CNG, the CNG stations. And that, uh, fortunately, the government of India has uh, done great work in um, uh, expanding that CNG network. 
And in fact, uh, today, as we talk, there are about 2,500 outlets across the country, which are CNG outlets. And we have uh, a very ambitious plan of reaching almost 11,000 in the next four or five years. And South especially, specifically will gain much out of it. So I think the as the spread of uh, CNG outlets increase, mm. you will find more adoption of it and will be much lower waiting times, if at mm. all. Uh, in for for the thing of the uh, uh, petrol of the CNG. The other thing which I wanted to bring to your notice is that there are some places where there is enough CNG stations and outlets available, okay. like Gujarat, like Pune, Pune, like Mumbai. There, even in the consumer, uh, the individual consumer segment, uh, like for Celerio or Wagonar in Bombay, Pune, almost seventy percent of the vehicles are CNG. Oh. In the consumer oh. segment, yeah. So it's 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 not a uh, yeah. It's not as if it's only for public transport. So that's a sort of a um, uh, a, a, a wrong impression which people mm. have because the starting point happened to be the public transport. But now there is widespread uh, uh, widespread acceptance among the consumers for CNG. Uh, other point uh, which, I, which I wanted to tell you was that, uh, now with the rising uh, the 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 uh, fuel prices, like in Bangalore, uh, uh, a, a liter of petrol is probably 84, 85 rupees. A liter of diesel is about 78. Uh, CNG is still about 47, 48 rupees uh, uh, to the kg. And that means that the running cost of CNG vehicles is very low compared with a diesel or a petrol. Diesel petrol running cost is roughly around 4 rupees, 350, uh, 3 rupees 50 to 4 rupees a kilometer. And CNG is about 1 rupee. 61 rupees 70 paise uh, uh, a kilometer. So there's a huge difference in the running cost and that I think is fueling the you, uh, the increased acceptance of CNG for personal cars as well. Someone was telling me, one of your representatives at Maruti Suzuki said that in one tank, which would be about 500 rupees for me to fill in a CNG, say, Ertiga, I can go up and down to Mysore. 500 rupees, that's cheaper than a bus ride. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's because if you compare uh, the... Uh, uh, diesel, uh, mostly public transport run on diesel, especially in that part of the country. In Delhi, of course, it's CNG. But uh, uh, the diesel prices also are now almost the same as petrol yeah. prices. True. As I said, the running cost per kilometer for diesel also is about three and a half, four rupees compared to one and a half rupee for, uh, for one lakh, one, one rupee sixty paise for CNG vehicles. So I think it is one of those things. And the other important thing I must tell you also is that it's not just the cost of... Uh, of ownership, which is less for CNG cars. It's also that now with the factory fitted CNGs, mm. uh, there, there is no issue regarding safe, safety or performance, which was the other uh, uh, sort of um, uh, doubt or uh, apprehensions uh, consumers had uh, earlier. So those apprehensions are also now being removed because uh, with the factory fitted uh, uh, CNG cars, the safety is taken care of absolutely as also the design itself is uh, such that the cornering ability or the mm. uh, the acceleration or the um, uh, of, or the drivability in different terrains is taken care of at the design stage itself and you would recommend people to stick to the factory factory settings of the cng as opposed to personally going and tweaking it you would recommend factory settings for them absolutely and okay. I, and and the reason is clear because um, because uh, you know the factory fitted uh, cng vehicles are designed to uh, to to for the CNG uh, uh, tank to be fitted, so the suspension is modified, mm. the braking system is modified, the entire engine system, which takes care, say it's an intelligent uh, engine system using two uh, ECUs, which means there are two type of in, in in common parlance you can say two computers which okay. are detecting the terrain and and deciding how much fuel is to be sent to the CNG. Sec the, the, on the safety aspect. Even the crash testing is done with the uh, CNG cylinder fitted. So that makes it pretty sure that uh, it meets all the safety regulations. The electric system is integrated and it is not open. So there's no chance of a spark. Mm. And uh, there is a special steel pipes which are used for uh, transfer of fuel from the tank to the engine. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, with a ferrule technology, which is a joint technology. Uh, joints, the joints are of ferrule uh, uh, technology, which ensures there's no leakage. Mm. And all this is possible only in factory fitted uh, mm. CNGs. And that is why we always recommend and actually uh, uh, tell the consumers that they should, uh, uh, for CNG vehicles, prefer only 
the fact that we don't change it. So what is the deal with the SCNG, which is quite unique to Maruti Suzuki? Can you tell us about this, the SCNG technology? Basically, we are looking at uh, three aspects uh, 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 of this, uh, what we call the S technology for CNG vehicles, which takes care of safety, which takes care of, uh, <coughs> of savings, and mm. which takes care of, takes care of uh, super performance, as we say. So it's a saving, safety, and super performance. And uh, as I mentioned to you, the efficiency is brought about by technology. Mm -hmm. It's a dual ECU, which makes sure that depending on the speed at which you are driving, the terrain in which you are driving, that is whether it's a hill or whether it's a flat surface, whether it's a coastal area or mm -hmm. whether it is a, you know, a slippery surface, depending on that, the fuel uh, which is sent to the engine is optimal, which means that you have the best fuel efficiency mm -hmm. possible through that technology. On the safety side, I already mentioned to you, yeah. uh, it is designed such that, um, you know, it has a longer life also. Remember at some times uh, earlier, there was a fear that when people fill up the CNG at the CNG station, if you keep the engine running, there is a possibility of, uh, you know, some, some sort of a yes. danger. Yes. But in our auto switch uh, technology, so in our auto switch technology, which we are using, uh, when you open the uh, fuel, uh, for this to, uh, CNG to be filled up, the engine is auto automatically switches off. So that is the uh, part on safety. And also on the performance, I already mentioned about the suspension, about the brake system, which we tweak, and also the valve seating in the cylinders, uh, the engine cylinder, which makes sure that there is a longer life. Uh, these are all the factors which we take care of in our technology for CNG. That's why we call it the S technology, mm. which is factory fitted, and that therefore the best, I believe, for all the consumers using CNG technology for powering their vehicles. This sounds economical and eco-friendly, and that's the mood of the world today where carbon footprint has to be reduced. Now, you've given us safety aspects, you've given us performance aspects, cost aspects. Um, what are your parting words for people who are fence-sitters and are open to the idea, but not entirely? If you look at the uh, factory-fitted CNG as a package of safety, of uh, cost of running being low, the cost of acquisition also being low, actually, if you compare with the petrol yes. vehicle, uh, it's uh, only a margin, marginal increase as against diesel. So if you buy a diesel, then it's a very huge uh, amount of uh, uh, money you have to pay extra over the petrol vehicle. Uh, it's about a lakh and 50,000 rupees higher. But in CNG, it's about 60,000 uh, only. So uh, looking at all these aspects, I think, and also because if you really truly care for the environment, uh, with CNG being a very low emission uh, fuel. Um, it's good also for the country because you save yes. on import uh, cost as well, you know, so in that sense. So in all aspects, I don't see there is any negative in using CNG, especially with the technology which is now available from Maruti Suzuki. With this, I believe this is the ideal choice. And uh, going forward, it will get even better because the network, uh, which mm. I believe in Bangalore, there are about 18 to 20 stations. The, uh, there is very aggressive plan. Another 50 are coming up in Bangalore in the next yes. uh, uh, three, four months. So I think it would be, yeah, so even those waiting times, which could be the only reason why some people may be hesitant to use CNG, is uh, also getting over. So I think that's the uh, direction to go now. And I'm sure if people uh, prefer the factory fitted uh, CNG from Marty Suzuki technology, they will have no regrets whatsoever. And in fact, <laughs> they'll be highly pleased that they, decide, they, they decided to uh, listen to, uh, to Richa. And uh, that's how I believe it's going to be in the future. And Mr. Shivasta, before I let you go, people who are listening and are wondering, are there only large vehicles under Maruti Suzuki that are now CNG um, compliant? Or is it across the spectrum from hatchbacks to sedans to the MPVs to the bigger cars? Could you just tell us what cars have the entire range of the CNG options for people considering to buy one? Yeah, so we have about uh, eight uh, uh, um, uh, products which are currently with CNG. We have the Alto, we have the Espresso, we have the Wagon R, uh, we have the Celerio, which are the smaller cars. Yes. We have the Desire as also Artiga, which is the larger MPV, uh, as also the Eco. Uh, uh, we have uh, Super Carry as well. And going forward, we have plans for other models as uh, also. So I think uh, CNG is here. Uh, by the way, uh, Richa, I must tell you one thing. Yes, please. That uh, for CNG, yes, for CNG, despite the fact that last year wasn't so great for the auto industry overall, there mm. was a degrowth. 
but for cng there was a very positive growth even last year uh, oh. it, you know uh, our sale increased from about 105 to 100 and 100000 to almost 107000 and this year we are expected that despite this covid thing when the industry is expected not to grow so much it is expected that cng sales we would be clocking almost 140000 up from 107000 last year so i think we are looking at it very positively early signs are already in yeah. uh, uh, there has been an increase uh, even in this period of april to august or in our cng penetration so i think it augurs well uh, we are very bullish about uh, uh, this product i'm sure, mm. sure as consumers uh, consumers take up to this uh, activated cng cars they will find that this becomes a sort of a movement not only for uh, saving mm. and safety and performance but also a movement for environment also a movement for saving on our uh, import bill as far as fuel is concerned so i must tell you i had the opportunity to drive about 7 to 8 people in the ertiga the cng and it was a beautiful drive lovely yeah. experience and uh, yeah. i think yeah. trying it first hand myself i feel a little more confident about it and uh, i want to congratulate you and your entire team that seems positively optimistic thank you so much for the cng so congratulations yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you Thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank you so much thank for talking you. to us